Hey everybody, it's Rusty back to give you an update on Lisa's cancer, where she is, what we've been doing. First of all, sorry it's taken so long for me to make a video. Uh, we've had a interesting few months leading up to this. Um, basically, back, what happened was back in April and May, we were supposed to run chemo into May, finish May was our sixth month. But during April, we realized um, through the exams and the doctor kind of noticed that we were kind of staying the same, not progressing, or I mean not still shrinking. And so going into May, he decided to pull Lisa off of chemo because chemo wasn't working anymore and we also realized that the tumors had started to grow again which means um, obviously the disease was progressing again but uh, we were lucky still stayed within the breast and lymph nodes and everything where it was it did not progress anywhere else so that was a Monday and they ordered a full battery of tests you know PET scans blood all that stuff to see what how where we were how far it was sitting that Tuesday, this was, I don't know, end of April, maybe, I can't remember. That Tuesday, I took her in. She basically, long story short, she ended up with a very severe skin infection on her chest, um, all over her chest, up to her neck, uh, down her right arm, and down her left rib. So we walked her in. I took her in, and... Um, First, it was they named they said it, I'll call it all kinds of stuff cellulitis, some kind of staph created by basically everything was created by a strep strand that was attacking. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but basically she ended up swelling up like a balloon, becoming super bright red, like somebody poured boiling water on her. And the crazy part about it is when infectious disease people came in, the surgeon of their team what that kind of thing can progress to is I can't remember the big name of it but if your muscle starts to produce gas under your skin there will be like air pockets that feel like Rice Krispies popping so every time they touched her they were always examining her that way they like pressing on her touching her that way so they drew lines on her wherever the skin was to make sure that didn't spread because if it would have spread it would have really been bad so it could have turned into like a flesh eating disease I know that sounds kind of crazy but it's true so if there's a high amounts of gas underneath there that will go nuts and start eating itself I guess so long story short we were later that night Tuesday night we were basically in pre-op and infectious disease was wanting to take all of her skin of the infected area Luckily, our oncology surgeon stepped in and said, um, we, this isn't our goal to do this. You know, she just did chemo for five months. Her immune system is jacked. She doesn't, who knows what's going to happen. So we were sitting there, and basically, you got infectious disease telling you that if you don't pull the skin, you got 24 hours, it might eat through down in the organs and stuff. And then you got the cancer people saying, if we do, do the infect, pull the infection off, who knows if she's even going to make it off the table. So, uh, I chose to keep her skin. <laughs> Obviously, you can see her walking around with her skin. So, they were kind of baffled. They didn't know what to do because it was one of those damned if you do or damned if you don't kind of things. And basically, I chose, hey, you know what? Well, basically, if she's if you're thinking she's going to make it a day anyway, then let's keep her skin. So, sorry, I know that sounds kind of rough and morbid, but that's what it was like. So they threw her in ICU. She was on an hourly watch for 48 hours. First 24 every hour that they came in, basically she didn't eat or drink obviously for the 48 because they were on a watch saying, hey, you know, if anything spreads or if anything comes up on the blood, we're taking her no matter what. But uh, luckily she started, she pulled through and they came and checked her every hour infectious disease did and then uh, I didn't see that lady she came in like the first three hours and then I never seen the ID surgeon ever again I seen her on TV a while back she was doing a story about using fish scales or something but 
kind of spooked me when I seen her again. But anyway, she came out of there. She was in ICU for two days and got that all better. She had to do a monster antibiotic protocol for the next 10 days when we got out. She was able to come go into the normal room, come out, and then we got antibiotics. So we had to run that for 10 more days. So there's two weeks of your time where she got an infection, got healed from the infection. So then once that is done, then you start going through your tests. You figure out where's the disease, what's going on, has it progressed, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back in the groove trying to figure out, all right, what's the next step? Because chemo stopped working. She also just got through this massive disease, or not disease, but infection. So, so we went through the tests, found out that yes, it progressed more. Tumors had started to grow and this stuff grows fast. We're lucky, no organs, obviously. Breasts started growing pretty fast. Lymph nodes started growing fast. Picked up a couple more lymph nodes on the way. But bones were better, which was pretty cool. I mean, you gotta try to find positives in all this, but bones were better and no organs. So next thing we did was we met the uh, ovary surgeon, OBGYN surgeon. So since her stuff is caused with, or caused by uh, hormones, progesterone and estrogen positive, we took out her ovaries. So then we did an ovary surgery, and once she healed from that, now we started a, uh, the protocol was to use this shot. <clears throat> so once you eliminate the cancer maker from the ovaries, now you will basically, the shot and things you take now will eliminate all the rest of it in your body. So we've been doing that. Uh, we did that for like a week. And then they sent us to wound care because she's been having a lot of skin issues, obviously, from the cancer and plus infections. So uh, I've been having to put, like, uh, sterile dressings on her every day. And so we've been going, we were back and forth with wound care. That was like a month worth of learning how to do wound care, what wound care thought. And then wound care was like, listen, you gotta have you gotta have a surgery because you gotta remove these because this your skin ain't gonna get no better. So then we went through conversations of okay, we're gonna have a, finally a double mastectomy now. Where before they don't want to do any mastectomies like that because of the stage four, they're more concerned about you know obviously keeping it at bay, prolonging life, things like that. So, sorry, I'm really trying to make this fast, but I got a lot of months to catch up. My fault. So anyway, we uh, wound, con wound control called them and said, listen, what's the ordeal? Let's get these things off of her. Let's get going. So now we're thinking, oh, sweet, we're going to have a mastectomy. Now we're really rocking and rolling. So we went and met the surgeons last week or a couple days ago. And the uh, breast surgeon is like, listen, this is the same lady who was in the meeting when the ID skin lady was in there and it was her. So she basically, I really love her a lot because she basically saved Lisa from getting skinned from the other lady. So I'll listen to Dr. Maxwell, whatever she says. But Dr. Maxwell basically said, you know, your, your tumors are still pretty, pretty good sized um, and the skin around it, basically if we went in now it would be very, very drastic, like the other skin removal. So, because you never know how deep the tumor is. I mean, you could even get in there and not just take skin. You could be taking majority of the pec major and who knows whatever the hell's going on in there. So then there wouldn't be a lot of chance for a reconstructive um, protocol after that, you know, where they start off with like stretchers and spread or whatever it's called. They stretch and then they go bigger and bigger as you go. It's basically you would be a dent in some whatever skin we could find, whether it was from your thigh or from wherever. So now, sorry this is long, but now we've got to where we are now, and that is we take this pill, or she takes this pill for the hormone to kill all the hormones within still floating in her body, plus we are now going to start radiation. We have not done a radiation yet, so once Dr. Maxwell examined her, sent it to the team, she met with everybody else, met with the radi radiation people, and they're deciding that probably now, not probably, but we're going to meet with this radiation guy. The next step is we're going to hit her with a double whammy of taking the pill and radiation. And so <clears throat> 
that will shrink everything down which and then once we get out of radiation the double mastectomy will then be on the table again ready to use but you know and it it gets pretty frustrating because you know you're thinking all right we're we're moving forward moving forward and then all of a sudden bam we fall backwards and it's just it's pretty rough because you're thinking you're thinking the mastectomy is kind of like the closer to the finish line kind of thing so once you get that done all right now we you know we got the majority of everything out of it now we're just kind of clean up whatever's left but they it's it's really good it's frustrating but it's also very good that we have a team of doctors that aren't you know quick to cut quick you know quick to do things they make sure they go through everybody they talk to everybody anybody got any other ideas so we're very blessed with the team it's just sometimes it's frustrating so that's where we are right now um we will start that i'm hoping we meet with them this week and we get rocking and rolling in the next week to come so that's what's been going on that's i'm sorry it took me long to make this video but that's what's been happening since about april so that's all the crazy bad news you know i mean we were really flying with the chemo chemo was working great shrinking everything super fast like i told you on the last video so it was kind of a you know kick in the stomach when all of a sudden they tell you oh it ain't working no more now everything's starting to grow again well then what what the hell are you going to do now and then you get a whammo you know a ginormous infection you know that they're basically talking i mean i've never had somebody sit there in an in an operating room and ask me if I want to resuscitate my wife or not. And I'm like, you bet your ass you're going to resuscitate her on the table. You know, and I've seen her go through, and nobody knows this or not, but ever since Brooklyn was born, our, our second daughter, Lisa's been having like tons of like weird body stuff. Like she grew fibroids and all these things. She had like a surgery a year. So surgeries ain't nothing for her. She's tougher than hell, but that, that one, going into that one, was, <laughs> that was a, uh, that was pretty interesting but um she's better she's out of that everything's cleared up with that thank god she made it through there you know and all that all these really nasty couple months that we just got through you know the the best thing about it is um you know it's july and uh her birthday's in july so sorry um the good news about that is she's gonna have a birthday you know and a lot of these uh a lot of these closed door meetings like in november <clears throat> you know you're you're talking about whether birthdays are coming or not and there was no doubt in my mind that they were coming but you know it's uh it's good it's awesome so you get through all this hell and then you get a little bit of you know you get all this good news where we're gonna have a birthday you know she's gonna have a birthday this year and then we're gonna get another damn birthday and we're gonna keep rocking and rolling we're gonna keep pushing and fighting we're gonna get through more birthdays so you, you don't fall into all the history and science and all these timelines and all this crap you just keep scrapping and you get to the next birthday so sorry about that finish there my bad but um that's where we are right now Again, thank you guys so very much for everything and anything. I mean, we get support from you guys on this site, from my kids' school, like always. I mean, they help us so much with not just, like, gifts and stuff, but they take care of my kids at school when they're struggling. I mean, they couldn't see Mommy throughout the ICU time, and I know they were freaking out a little bit, and the teachers were taking care of them, the coaches were taking care of them, and I can't thank all them people enough. I can't thank my job enough. The administrators, you know, they're helping me with anything and everything I need to do with Sean and Steve and everybody. It's it's phenomenal. And Boyd and everybody, they're all they're all helping me out. So again, I can't thank everybody enough. Um and uh I promise them <laughs> once we get going with this radiation, we get out of that and I hear more, I promise I'll I'll hit you guys up with some uh more videos that are a little more sooner than waiting three or four months at a time. So I apologize for that again and thank you.